Welcome back to Two Crows Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Holmes. And today, we're talking about urban legends. One of my favorite urban legends is that of the back room. One that I have had similar dreams to since I was young. In 2019, an anonymous user started a thread on 4chan with a paranormal-themed board. They had asked users to post images that felt off. One of the posts was the original photo of the back rooms, a picture of a large carpeted open room with yellow paper and fluorescent lighting on a Dutch angle. It is not known where the photo was taken, but it appeared in an earlier thread, April 21, 2018. One user replied the following day, If you're not careful and you no-clip out of reality, in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old, moist carpet, the madness of mono-yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at a maximum hum buzz, and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you. Anonymous on 4chan, May 13th, 2019. Pretty soon after the original creepypasta was posted, 4chan and Reddit were bombarded with other people's tales of the back rooms, their own experiences and accounts through dreams, or some even claimed awake. There have been lists made of the different levels to the back rooms. It is claimed that there are 34 main levels along with 20 secret levels to stumble across. These levels take place in various settings, ranges from claustrophobic tunnels to infinite cities. On each level, you can encounter areas with distinct properties known as sublevels. The world in which you encounter the back rooms looks similar to our world, an office perhaps, but it's different, off, wrong. They call level zero the lobby. This is where we talked about that hum buzz and the mono yellow. It's the most commonly seen level of the back room, as most unwitting back room travelers land here first. Level one is the habitable zone. A massive warehouse with concrete floors and walls exposed, rhubar, dim fluorescent lights placed on the walls in a low-hanging fog with no discernible source. In this realm, you are relatively safe. There's not a lot that will jump scare you or come out, but there's noises that you can hear. Level 2, pipe dreams, is what we call it. A set of long, straight maintenance tunnels accompanied by pipes and vents on the walls spanning large distances with turns and intersections being incredibly rare. It seems to go on forever. You can't really see an end in either direction. You do come across the rare turn, but again, it just leads to a straight nothing. Again, you hear a lot of noises here and possibly see something out of the corner of your eye. Level 3, the electrical station. An expansive of narrow corridors and electrical machinery. Similar to level 2, but better maintained and with more electrical machinery around. Many believe that the whole back room is powered by level 3. It has a very loud hum. It's one of the noisier levels but it has an off feeling to it, and again, seems to go on forever. Level four is the abandoned office, an empty office building devoid of furniture except the occasional water fountain or abandoned chair. Level four also has vending machines containing snack bars and almond water. Very often is the almond water mentioned, by a lot of different Reddit users and 4chan users for this level. You may find colonies of humans living on level 4 as well. However, be warned, 
many windows on this level are in fact window entities. These are treacherous, although not hostile. Level 5 is known as Terror Hotel. It's unsafe, unsecure. Unconfirmed entity sightings have been discovered here. This level is a lot more difficult to survive, so I hope you grabbed your almond water and a snack. Level 5 is presumably an infinite, ever-expanding hotel complex, complete with all the luxuries of a hotel, such as lounges, ballrooms, guest rooms, restaurants, hallways, gyms, swimming pools, and maintenance halls. The level, however, does not follow Euclidean geometry, which makes many wanderers lose track of where they are, never to be found again. Some places on this level are also randomly segmented, with some doors leading to nowhere or cut-off rooms or stairs. Due to how large the level encompasses, it is also rare for wanderers to gather together. Despite this, a few obscure outposts are clinging to survival, where you will find small sections of humanity where they've tried to remain close so that they don't lose each other, but they do dwindle because as one or two decide to go off on their own and are often never seen again. The ambiance of this floor seems to cater to the early 1930s or late 1920s. It appears to be more of an oriental style hotel, but the age and aesthetic, as well as the appearance of this level, can vary greatly. Opening a door seemingly to another room would lead to a complex with a completely different aesthetic, though this occurrence is rare. Despite shifts in the level's appearance, the overall lonely, liminal, eerie feeling never fades away. There's often an overwhelming feeling of anxiety and paranoia when on this level. This level is infamous for its mysterious whispering and unseen presence. People report something whispering incoherently behind them, tapping on their shoulder. But when you turn around, you see nothing, or, even worse, a silhouette as it dashes around a corner. Some people believe that these sightings, sounds, and feelings are hallucinations caused by the level itself, possibly even the paranoia bringing it on. Yet others claim that it's real, that this level does have entities. In the dining area on this level, if you can find it, you will find that same almond water and some snacks again. Despite this, many people still go insane on this level. They can't reach any others. They can't go on. They get a sort of illness caused by level 5. Many also speculate that this level fosters the transformation of wretches. Wretches are wanderers who have been deformed by the toll that the back room has taken on them. They can vary widely in appearance, and many specimens commonly produce oral gags or snarls with little known purposes. It almost appears as if their skin is inside out. They have very wide smiles, although it's unclear if they're just missing their lips, and that's why it appears that they're smiling, or if they're actually smiling at you. There are many paintings on the walls that seem to follow you with their eyes. Wallpaper with faces seen within them. Patterns on the ceilings. You seem to feel like you're being watched all the time, and it increases the paranoia. The portraits are sort of gruesome, usually depicting petrified faces and eldritch deities. The hotel rooms are luxurious, but always slightly cramped and claustrophobic in arrangement, despite the varying sizes of the rooms. Furniture is placed irregularly and sometimes found in the hallways. There also seems to be a lack of windows. You only find them every once in a while. Furthermore, windows are all unbreakable aside from one variant. Very rarely a window in the modern variation of level 5 would display level 188 behind it. 
These windows are rumored to be breakable and may transport wanderers to level 188. Rumors also say that some windows may be predatory windows in disguise, but no conclusive evidence is enough to provide their existence. The consistent jazz-like ambiance plays through the level, though it may sound farther or nearer at random intervals. A constant buzz of the iridescent can also be heard along with reports of distant party chatter, which makes you want to wander around and look for the people that it might belong to. According to Mitch the Wanderer, the Terror Hotel gives off an unsettling feeling, a little too quiet, as if the place is dead. No, more like the level is holding its breath. The furniture here is pristine and beautiful, yet seemingly immovable, giving off a deathly feel. I can feel my anxiety building up slowly, but steadily. It's as if the feeling grows the longer one stays here. A haunted level, no doubt about it. This leads us to some of the people that live here, called the Originals. They're a group of people trapped in the back rooms throughout the passing of human history. Many famous historical figures who disappeared have ended up in the back rooms and are now part of this group. This group consists of nearly 50 members. They are nomadic, traveling through level 5 at random intervals. Notable members include Amelia Earhart, John White, Dorothy Arnold, Solomon Northup, John Jacob, Astor IV, Captain Edward Smith, and Jimmy Hoffa. The originals work as a team and do not have an official leader, but people like Earhart, White, and Smith are well respected and take the role of unofficial leaders when needed. Though they are suspicious of anyone from later or earlier periods, they are willing to trade goods with passers-by but reluctant to interact with other colonies like the ERC and the backroom colonists. Many newer members were no-clipped during the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, the 1912 sinking of the Titanic, and the 1931 Yanks floods. A diary entry found from A. Watson reads, Something has been on my mind for a long time. I will submit this page directly to Imparisario S. It will hopefully end up in the database. The eerie landscape of the level is unnerving. Some may write it off as a strange effect, but I know there is a deeper explanation for this. All the rumors of skittish entities, the constant increase of unexplainable deaths, all these things point to something. I did not think much of it before, although it has always been in the back of my mind. I don't know where to start on this topic, but if there are any inconsistencies in my reports, you can ask Mitch or Rain, as they were with me during this joint exploration. During an expedition, we changed upon a set of portraits in a hotel area with modern furnishings. The drawings depicted horrified faces and octopus-like gods. Perhaps, out of sheer coincidence, Mitch recognized one of the portraits. It bore a near-identical similarity to a friend he lost contact with long ago. Though we later found out, his corpse was found by base Demos. Rain then noticed the uncanny similarity between the portraits depicting the gods. It is almost as if they're the same deity, or at least closely related. Their eyes seemed to follow us like they were watching, waiting. What followed may be a hallucination. A sudden sound started to emanate from all the directions. It was deep and inhuman, like a bass drum, although it sounded far away. What followed was a lot of scraping and clanging. I couldn't recognize all the sounds, but it was getting louder by the second, as if something was nearing us at extreme speeds. As the noise grew, the portrait started melting, then so did our surroundings. A sense of extreme panic took over us, and we ran. The following memories are foggy. 
I'm not sure what happened, but before I knew it, we no-clipped into level 5.5. While in the sublevel, I didn't know why no one recognized the detail of the portraits before us, but thinking back, many might have. We were just the one, only ones that lived to tell the tale. So there are also sub categories to the levels. So you'll see there's like 0 0.1, 0 0.5. And so I'm only focusing on the main levels right now, which there are a lot of, so I will not get to all of them. If you would like, I could continue on. I'm going to go through 0 through 10 with this episode, but there are hundreds. So if you want me to continue on to further levels, please let me know when I will make another episode of 11 through 20. The only entrances to this level are the main entrance, which takes you from level 4 to level 5, or a random no clipping from reality or from another level. So that's when your body just kind of disappears from where you're at and reappears somewhere else. They call that no clipping. There are several exits, though. There's the main exit, which takes you to level 6. There's random no clipping, um, which may take wanderers to level 5.5 and exit 2. This is exit 2, sorry. An unnaturally extensive hallway may transition to the environment of a greenhouse, which would lead one to level 13. It is rumored that some windows, which this is on several levels, will take you to level 188. Rarely entering certain rooms that have the number 5 on them may transfer one to level 666. No clipping through the walls in a hallway decorated with Chinese decorations will lead one to level 909. This leads us to level 6, and this level is called Lights Out. Level 6 is an expansive complex of indeterminate size, consisting of metallic walls, concrete floors, and a complex system of pipes. Strangely, the entirety of the level is shrouded in a complete, profound darkness with an artificial source of light. This light is immediately extinguished upon your entry, so you only get a glimpse of it. The absolute absence of light in level 6 makes it nearly impossible to accurately navigate through the intricate maze of corridors and rooms. Auditory hallucinations are frequently experienced here, ranging from rushing water to voices ringing through the complex. It is believed that level 6 may be able to influence one's perception of reality resulting in symptoms of paranoia. This level does not have any actual tangible threats in it, although the absence of light leads to our fear, our fear of what is unknown, our fear of what could be. When you cannot see anything and your fear kicks in, you end up having a lack of time, the conception of it. You end up having lack of sleep, lack of the ability to rest, and this leads to the mental breakdown. If you already have existing mental health conditions, they will be exasperated by this level. After extended periods of time in this level, further exploration becomes difficult, both from fatigue and from constant bursts of rest, known as microsleep. I don't know if you've ever experienced having to micro sleep, but when I was in labor for seven days, I would sleep those few minutes between contractions for days, and it was exhausting. I did start hallucinating. It was absolutely wild and something I had never experienced before, a sense of exhaustion that I never knew that I had. I couldn't help but sleep. Your brain wants to shut down when you're that exhausted. This has multiple psychological effects on you. Your brain ends up having little toxins and things that it only washes away while you sleep. This is what leads to you being drowsy, you not remembering things correctly when you're really tired, leading to you feeling that sense of tiredness. Like, what is that? There seem to be no colonies on this level, and as stated, no entities either. 
The entrances are going through a boiler located on level 5 or a rusted door located on level 6.1, which leads directly to level 6. Exits include tripping on wire leads to level 6.1, entering a hole will lead you to level 8, wandering far enough will bring you to level 7. There have been rumors of being able to no clip to and from this level, but there are no strong, um, substantial evidence of this. This leads us to level seven, the one where if you just continue going on your path, you'll eventually get to. It's known as the thalassophobia level. It's known for its vast infinite sea that stretches indefinitely. This level, covered in a moderately dense fog, as it only allows vision for no more than a few hundred meters. The water is extremely cold, measuring 20 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly negative 7 degrees Celsius. The depth of the ocean is unknown, as it extends far beyond the surface into the abyss of unknown deepness. This is also fresh water, and it is safe to drink. Under the condition that one heats it up for an extended period of time before drinking it. No wanderer has greatly explored level 7 due to its treacherous conditions, and none shall ever venture far enough to sufficiently document the level's boundless oceans. The winds on this level are strong, measuring about 200 miles per hour, approximately 322 kilometers per hour, and are theorized to be what drives the ocean to such reckless conditions. Strangely, in this level there is no rain, but many theorize it to be due to the indeterminate level-wide source of illumination. The gravity of level 7 appears to be moderately low, as the waves can reach abnormally great heights, measuring almost a few miles at most. Additionally, the sea never appears to be at ease, as its waves constantly rage in a destructive manner. Consequently, the entirety of the level echoes with an eternal noise due to the chaotic state of the ocean. When you first appear in this level, you'll be in a small claustrophobic room devoid of furniture. The space is flooded by a calm layer of water approximately 5 inches or 12.7 centimeters tall. This water, however, is much warmer than the level sea and can be drunk to refresh wanderers due to its self-cleaning properties. The room has significantly lower gravity than the main level, as bits of water can be seen floating in the room. Opposite from the wanderer's starting position will be a corridor that extends for a few meters before ending in a regular door. Once one opens the gate between safety and the unknown, they will be greeted with the ocean's mania. Written by an unknown wanderer. The Thing on Level 7 I remember how I arrived onto the infinite sea. At first, I thought it was just another regular level. Simple, infinite, interconnection of segmented rooms. But as I walked past the door, I almost fell into the sea below. I was simply dazed as the cold mist started to gather on my face. As I star stared out into the oblivion, all that stared back at me was a dense, lifeless fog. The ocean beckoned me to swim within its cold waters, and my will almost crumbled. I fell forward, but a spray from the frigid ocean jolted me back to my senses. I grabbed the wall, but I reacted far too late. My hands slipped, and I fell into the ocean below. I could feel the stings of the wind wrapping and coiling around me as I plummeted below. The fall itself was another scale of cold on its own. The air snaked around me and it brushed against my skin, freezing my sweat in the process. I dove in the sea, sinking far below the surface. My blood ran cold, my eyes froze with tears, my mouth became rigid from the water. The ocean is simply a purgatorial abyss. Staring down, it seemed to extend infinitely shapeless, unbounded, and depthless. The light blue of the ocean's surface soon faded into a dark blue void and went down for the God knows how long. 
around in the water some debris of the house had fallen in with me. They sank into the chasm, and I, too, was forced to follow them down. Oh, the coldness! How unbearable it was! The waters were just utterly unendurable in every way. It almost appeared to restrain you as it pulls you down to the non-existent bottom. It was then that I understood thalassophobia, the fear of deep water. I thought I was ultimately fated to become a frozen corpse in the dead sea, but then I saw light. For many years, Level 7 was believed to have only one entity, the infamous thing on Level 7. As of April 8, 2019, Level 7 is now inhabited by another entity who goes by the name Tiny. The combined ferocity and physical prowess of both entities have left the entire rest of the ocean completely uninhabited, making them the primary source of danger within the level. Both entities appear to be matched only by one another in terms of speed, strength, and detection, and are to be avoided by all means necessary. As of now, Tiny has been no shown to limit himself to the daylight and twilight zones, whereas the thing makes its home in the midnight zone and upper abyss. It is unknown how or why, but the two appear to have an agreement of mutuality. Assured destruction preventing one another from hunting outside their designated territories. The only known entrance to level 7 is through the staircase down from level 6, which leads directly into the entrance room. There are rumors of a possible entrance through a puddle on the floor of level 8. The exits. The most well-known exit of level 7 can be found in an underwater cave on the side of a particularly tall mountain towards the bottom of the midnight zone. The mountain is almost directly below the entrance room, creating a straightforward, albeit lengthy, route to level 8. Though it is strongly discouraged, diving into the abyss and going unconsciously leads directly to level 83. As of 6-28-22, a new exit has been discovered, roughly 150 meters west of the entrance from that leads directly to level 9. The exit is approximately 150 meters below the surface and is marked by a collection of massive underwater pipes and the platform. Judging by the high qu quantity of skeletons and loose bone in the area, it is safe to assume that is where Tiny resides most of the time, so approach this area with extreme caution. Recent speculation suggests that level 7 may be connected in some way to other ocean levels, as several people have claimed to have traveled by boat to level 880 by sailing extremely far to the west of the entrance room. This exit is unproven, but is being looked into as a possible safer exit to the level. Level 8 is made of huge caverns and small cave systems that twist and turn like normal underground systems. Level 8 is very damp, with almond water flowing from the walls and ceiling. Stalactites and stalagmites appear to be very common in this level. Sounds echo through the level as it is relatively easy to listen for potential danger, or possibly even attracted if not careful. Level 8 is normally devoid of natural light, but light sources from an unknown origin shine on the damp walls, making the level slightly glow in areas. Vegetation appears rarely on level 8, in the form of dried vines and small shrubs. Large pools of almond water can be found around the level, which is not safe for consumption due to large amounts of minerals. Small veins of ore exist within level 8. This level includes many types of ore minerals such as iron, copper, gold, and more. The MEG have created public travel routes in the safe area of level 8 for safe travel for the wanderers. The MEG stands for Major Explorer Group. 
It's a group created by the people of the back rooms. The group started out as an exploration outpost in 2012, but it grew to become a military government of sorts by 2014. The Meg tries to keep wanderers safe from entities, traps, and other groups such as the ins- insurrection, which they are at war with. The territory of the levels, like level 3, to ensure the safety of the wanderers. The Meg maintains multiple teams for different purposes. This faction is extremely friendly and will allow new members into a team known as Team Volunteer Squad until they are ready to be in a team of their own. They exist here because there are many dangerous entities that reside in this level, that being smilers, skin stealers, wretches, camo crawlers, transporters, male and female death moths, hostile facelings, hens, hounds, death rats, paralyzed clumps, roviokes, wranglers, and rare sightings of stalkers. Crawlers have been reported due to the vents of the level 2 connection to level 8. Windows have been reported to appear in level 8's walls. However, this claim has not been corroborated. Corroborated, sorry. Due to the danger presented by the entity known as Wranglers, it is highly advised um, to be aware of their ability before traveling this level above all. If any rumblings are heard or felt, evacuate the area immediately. Wranglers are snake-like entities that use their bodies to distract and confuse their prey in an almost hypnotic-like state. These entities usually appear in cave areas like level 6, level 52, and level 8. Wranglers can also appear in damp areas like level 2, level 2.1, and level 14. Reports show that wranglers have been spotted in level 9. These entities are dangerous, and it is advised to stay away from them at all costs. Wranglers are massive creatures that use their bodies to burrow through the ground for vast, fast travel. Their bodies twist and turn in a drill-like motion to cut through the hard materials of the level. Their bodies can cause hypnotic effects to wanderers to lure them in. They can use this ability to, t- to their advantage as a hunting tactic. When physically burrowing, wranglers are very loud. One can hear them approaching. The appetite of a wrangler is very large, as they will eat anything in sight, including wanderers. The ability of a wrangler vary depending on its sex and age. Males usually attack and to eat and will consume anything in its path. Females do not attack wanderers and will usually retreat when noticed. They will instead eat vegetation or rock minerals. The females will, however, eat wanderers when pregnant to feed their young. These eggs are seeds that grow on the female's body. Once the female lays eggs, they are implanted in the ground or the walls as a seed. These seeds will then sprout into a branch, holding many different offspring. During this phase, the female will return regularly to deliver food. Once the offspring outgrow their branch, they will break off from it and travel with the mother until they are old enough to live independently. Young wranglers use their body to physically burrow. This tactic is abandoned once they get older, as the wrangler starts to no-clip to burrow. They will eat anything their mother gives them. I don't think I want to come into contact with one of these things, even though I drive a wrangler. The entrances to level 8... Um, So finding the cave entrance in level 7, walking through a dark hallway in level 103... An as-of-yet undocumented exit in level 64, jumping through the well in level 135, small tunnels in level 52, crawling through the tubes in level 283, um, and then exits. To exit, you can randomly fall through the floor of level 8 and enter level 9. Rare, tiny, silvery passages of level 8 that lead to 75. Vents can be found in some areas that can lead to level 2. Entering the distilled water pools has been rumored to drag you back to level 7. Entering the tar pits in level 8 will cause you to be dragged into level 91 if you're lucky enough to survive. Not advised. 
no clipping through a corner of level 8 or a rare chance through exiting level 8 will bring you to level 93. No clipping through level 8 ceiling has a small chance to bring you to level 205. Finding random sets of old televisions and no clipping through them will lead you to 104. And falling through the floor randomly can also rarely lead you to level 69. Level 9 is an infinite suburban area where it's always midnight. The level has darkness similar to that of level 6, although not as dangerous. The houses vary in design and size, and each are completely different, although there are reports of spotting two houses near each other that are the same. The houses of level 9 appear to be furnished and fairly new, although there is no power source for the lighting systems to function. Some houses have a chance of being empty. Many useful objects, such as pockets, can be found inside the houses in similar areas. The furniture of these houses is what a person would expect from a normal house, such as sofas, televisions, beds, refrigerators, etc. Items that require a power source are not functional. Some of these houses have fully furnished yards at the back of the house. Another anomalous property of this level is that you can find two houses weirdly clipped inside of each other when traveling too far, which is physically impossible. The street of level 9 are more dangerous area of the level. The wet asphalt roads are unpainted and are covered with leaves in some areas. The puddles in some spots of the road indicate that the level had once rained before. The stone sidewalks are normal and don't seem to have any abnormalities. Any walkways that lead to grass fields will lead to level 9.1. Wandering off the walkway into the field will, for some reason, lead to level 10. The street lamps are usually powered off and are inactive, although some flicker off and on and are sometimes even powered. It is unknown where the power originates. Be aware of the foggy mist that can appear due to the fog being the spawning mechanism of the mangled. The Mangled is a large and very tall entity that roams the streets of level 9. These creatures have long limbs and are very spider-like, with a more human-like head and face. These entities are extremely dangerous, but are also very rare to encounter. These entities will typically be seen alone, among the trees and crawling over houses. They are very hostile and will attack on sight, but they can only appear during a special event. These entities only appear when a wanderer has been inside level 9 for a few days. During these days, the wanderer would see large sections of fog randomly in level 9. The fog is not harmful, but can damage hearing for a short amount of time, due to the large amount of distor distorted wind noise emitted from the fog. This fog can also um, bring down temperatures to zero degrees Celsius, so it's freezing cold. After the wanderer has encountered these fog clouds enough, the mangled will start to appear. They hunt via crawling around large structures in almost impossible ways. When the entity spots you, they will emit the same distorted wind sound from their mouths, and this sound can be heard from miles away. This wind effects can erase one's memories randomly and can even give false memories, but this seems to be temporary. The wind effects can also drive one insane, so please use almond water when possible. When close up, you can hear low-pitched screaming and sobbing coming from the entity when close. They attack by stepping on you and attempting to lift you off the ground. They can no-clip through the structures on command and can attack you very easily while inside a structure. These entities hunt alone, and according to witnesses, they will even attack each other if the entity is next to one another. The entity's eyesight seems to be very minimal, so try not to get too close. These entities are usually around 30 to 50 feet tall via their long leg structures and are very easy to spot. Although, 
these entities seem to be able to change their size and thickness of their limbs on command. These entities have four limbs that walk in a strange manner and in unnatural ways. Their joints can be bent in many ways, and they seem to be able to create new joints if needed. Their body is very bone-like, and old sagging skin seems to drip off of it. Their head is the size of an average human. The entity also has a large mouth that always seems to be open. These entities can crawl across large structures in impossible ways, even to the point where their joints seem mangled. These entities are very fast for their size and can easily catch up to wanderers running from it. The entities that appear in level 9 are the Death Moths, Smilers, Skin Stealers, Jerry, Hounds, Transporters, Death Rats, Warning Kites, and many wretches. Sightings of the Frayed and the Arachnids have been reported, but it seems that they have wandered into level 9 from level 8. Level 9 also includes some of its own special entities, the most notable ones including the Neighborhood Watch, the Observer, and the Mangled. If you want me to go over any of the actual entities um, specifically in an episode, let me know and I will try to get through as many of the entities as I can and describe them. One explorer says, I fell through the floor. I sunk and landed in an unfamiliar place. There were no spiders, but I still felt like I was being watched. Around me, there was a street, houses, and dead trees everywhere. My head felt and still feels fuzzy, like TV static in my brain. I lost consciousness, but apparently had an outburst, according to Centurion. I was talking about death, pain, weakness, all kinds of awful things. Level 9 is level 6 on crack. I can tell there are going to be things, but the effect on my mind are bad. Almost, almost as bad as level 6. This explorer was lost after publishing this post. Entrances to this level include entering by falling through the floor randomly in level 8, crawling up the sewer grate in level 34, one of the many doors inside of 92, the revolving door in level 40, the yellow arcade cabinet in level 25, entering one of the doors in level 54, the animated houses of level 94, breaking the window in level 87, the backyard of level 104. The exits include following the arrow street signs will soon lead you to level 11. After 100 to 200 miles, although this will only be the case when following the signs, Walkways that lead to the grass fields will lead you to either 9.1 or 10. Level 60 can be accessed by no clipping through the street floor. In level 9, entering a house will have a chance of randomly transporting you to level 53. Following the electric power lines has a chance to bring you to level 113. An airport can be found while following the signs to level 11. Enter the airport to be transported to level 36. No clipping will lead to the first new, sorry, first few negative levels. Finding a playground and crawling through any kind of tube structure with white glowing interior windows will commonly teleport you to level 283. So the last one I will talk about today is level 10, but again, I will go through 11 through 20 in a episode in the future if you would like to hear about more. Level 10 is an expansive pasture of wheat and barley fields stretching endlessly in all directions, divided into plots by lines of trees and shrubbery. The climate of the level never appears to shift from an overcast, leaden sky, with brief and infrequent spells of light, rain, and fog. The dreary atmosphere of level 10 couple coupled with its unchanging state of daylight makes it somewhat difficult to keep track of time. Only the occasional gust of wind will break up the uniformity. Bodies of water are present through level 10 below one consistent elevation. 
which likely occurs due to the level soil possessing slightly hydrophobic properties, preventing the irrigation of the water into the ground. The water from these pits has been deemed safe for human consumption, although it tastes has been reported to have an earthy undertone. Upon inspection, it appears to be free of algae and other organisms, only containing various microbes and a type of benign fungi. The water is believed to be highly oxygenated, which likely contributes to its clear, seemingly uncontaminated appearance. Areas surrounding these lakes often have a less cultivated appearance, including patches of dirt and grass. A diverse range of structures may be found intermittently in this level, such as small wooden sheds and outbuildings, as well as large barns and stables. These structures appear to be largely empty on the inside, aside from often housing certain useful resources, namely wood and nails. These resources, along with the structural elements of the buildings themselves, may be of interest for various purposes such as construction. While the potential for establishing permanent settlements in Level 10 appear promising, further analysis is needed before final decisions can be reached. The lines of shrubbery that separate the pasture of Level 10 into plots are of varying species and do not appear to have any unusual properties, aside from the fact that they do not seem to outgrow one another. Rather, they consistently remain at the same height. The trees, in particular, are of an average hardness and can be used as a source of wood, although it has proven more practical to obtain wood from the empty structures throughout the level. Further investigation of the plants may yield additional insights into the potential uses of the characteristics, as well as insights into the general ecology of Level 10. Dirt paths are often pre present throughout Level 10, distinguished by two strips of tire tracks, separated by a strip of grass suggesting that the path are frequently used by vehicles such as cars or tractors. However, despite this evidence of regular usage, no, F no such vehicles have ever been observed in Level 10. These dirt tracks do not appear to regrow, and in addition, attempts to cultivate plants on these roads have failed. With sown seeds failing to germinate, additionally, it has been observed that following these roads for a prolonged distance can often lead to Level 11. There are very few entities in level 10, except for the small worm-like entities that inhabit the soil beneath the surface. These worms have been observed through the use of shovels to dig into the soil, which is only one meter deep before giving way to the mass of worms, writhing in the darkness below. It is currently unknown how far down the worms extend, or where they originate and further exploration beneath the one meter depth has been deemed unfeasible due to logistics and safety concerns. It is advised to proceed with caution if excavating the soil in level 10, as it has been observed that digging a hole deeper than one meter may result in the rapid emergence of worms from the soil. This can present several hazards, including the potential for slipping or falling injuries, damage to clothing, and even the risk of physical harm from the worms attempting to burrow into the skin. If one wishes to collect them for any purpose, it is recommended to limit excavation to a small hole rather than a deep trench to minimize risk. Entrances include a walkway in level 9 that leads to a grass field and may lead one to this level. In certain streets in level 11, you can find a back road that leads back to 10. As far as the exits go, finding a road and following it for the prolonged period may eventually lead one to level 11. Finding a patch of canola among the wheat and entering it will lead one to level 184. Swimming into a lake can lead one to a number of aquatic levels, it is unknown how to choose which aquatic level that you are going to, but there is research underway. There is so much lore and twisty turny things within the back rooms that lead to other 
amazing stories that include staircases that lead to nowhere, as well as doors and buildings that seem to have no origin in our real world that possibly lead us to the back room. If you want me to research more and bring you more of the back room stories or other lore that are similar, please let me know. As always, I thank you for being here with me and I will be back. Crow out. <laughs>